Okay, something I forgot to mention in the bottom was I'm using a speed up circuit to increase the switch, uh, the speed of the switch time for the uh, input relay, the RJ1A, and the output switching RF relays. There are two RJ2Bs that are in parallel and also the RJ1A that does the bias switching. All of those coils are in parallel. It uh, for like a split second it switches them at they have a 26 volt coil they switch at 70 volts it was like 71 volts and then it drops right down so with that circuit I, I know a lot of people are using that circuit but something I noticed the as the coils as I kept the amplifier keyed I did this with, you know before I applied plate this was just dry key no no high voltage no RF nothing so uh, I took a measurement at one of the coils and the longer it was keyed, the, the higher the voltage would creep. So I started off at like 25, I had the series dropping resistor set, so I'd have uh, about 25 volts DC and it crept up, crept up, crept up. So I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh wait, you know, the resistor's not heating up, it was oversized. So I'm like, oh wait, now the coil resistance is changing you know, as the coils heat up. So, make a long story short, I had to change that value, added more resistance. Now, after it switches at 70 volts, 71 volts or whatever, for a split second, it drops down to like 21 volts. And these relays, they open at like 12 or 13. It's like real low. So, now the voltage, worst case, will creep up. I think it's like, I measured like 27 volts or 26 or 27. So, I left it keyed for like eight minutes straight and then it like levels off. So that's something to remember if you're going to put that type of circuit in because you don't want to damage the coils of the relays, especially expensive relays. Okay, so second issue here, uh, oh, that was an issue on the bottom. So first issue up here, the uh, plate choke uh, was designed for the low end of six meters and it ended up, the, ended up having an arc issue uh, part way up and it, I guess it was the second series resonance that was causing it so ended up changing the value it's around seven microhenries now and now it it's uh, designed for the high end of six meters so that is no longer an issue I also changed the way it's connected I cut the ferrite down uh, this is uh, number 16 wire I put a strap uh, between the anode you know between the strap and the anode and I have a copper 632 screw on the other side and 632 I'm sorry copper uh, nut I'm sorry solder to the strap and uh, you need to put a split washer underneath this 632 screw so um, this will when he takes the tube out he'll have this separate and you'll have to put that back in I just wanted to keep the lead length nice and short so safety choke did not have any issues, but it was, once we did the calculations, it was off. So that got rewound. Same size wire, number 19, but removed some turns. Okay. So uh, I've had people make comments about using strap, not in this amp, but other amps. You know, you want, you know, as you go up in frequency, the RF rides on the surface, surface area. So this is inch and, I think it was inch and a quarter. So... It, the RF is on both sides in this case, so this strap compared to tubing would be like huge. It'd be like, it was like 5 eighths, or it was like really big. So I don't remember off the top of my head. So that stuff is all set. I'm going to show you how I have this hooked up. I got the uh, temporary wires, the two Teflon wires going in the bottom right here. Oh, one going in that goes right to that optical isolator thing, and the other one's the ground. That's the external supply. Got the SFT 600 coax with a 716 DIN. This stuff's rated for more than uh, LDF 578. It's good stuff. It's very hard to find. Um, so, using my FT 950 and uh, got a 10 kW slug and that massive dummy load. So, that presents a 1.2 SWR and that thing will handle Buku power. So the way I have it set up is I have a line section between the actual uh, radio right now and the amplifier measuring the reflect uh, so I can tune the input SWR which I got down nice and flat and uh, got that 
ALS 606. That was supposed to be the driver, but it has an issue. We bought it brand new, and it's only putting out 300 watts on 6 meters and only 400 on uh, the lower band. So it definitely has an issue. So the customer bought an ALS 1306, and hopefully that works new out of the box. So I got that black meter on the top that has a PEP kit in it, and it's connected right to the line section. So right now it was hooked up, I mean, it's disconnected now, but it was connected to a 30 amp circuit just for the preliminary testing. This is the new house to me. I have not put a big circuit over here yet. So uh, it's hooked up to the dryer circuit, and you know, it's a long run to the plug, and then I have some smaller wire and then I have the cable coming out of the amp which is number two so a lot of voltage drop it was about eight volts a drop less ag so anyway I got it up to uh, about 3300 watts on side band with the PEP kit on and it was about 100 watts of drive things working awesome just awesome so uh, next step is I order the breaker I'm going to put that in the panel which is on the other side of the house and uh, I'll have to wire it directly to the panel. I don't have time right now to run a wire. It's, it's finished down here. It'd be a major pain right now to run a, a big cable over here and, and conceal it. Um, I'm going to upgrade the service here like the other house to 400 amp service. Right now I have a, a big transformer on the street. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's what's going on right now. And I will show a video of it producing 10. But I'm very happy with, and Jim's very happy with, the results, this thing, the blower pushes so much air. You know, it's not, not loud. And uh, you could put a piece of cardboard, you know, over a foot above it and put two fingers on it and it'll hold it in place. I mean, even higher than that. So the blower is doing a really good job and uh, everything else is good. So please uh, stay tuned and you'll get to see this thing producing the full 10 kW PEP. Oh, one other mistake I made, I forgot to mention, is I had these reversed. I had to switch one wire on each one. So this one was reading the uh, play current, grid current. So I'm gonna also label everything. So, but that's about it. So thanks for watching. Website is amprepairguy.com. Phone number is 203-892-4119. Now I have to work on an Emeritron ALEDB, which is over there. So, but, <clears throat> yeah, barefoot. So, floor aren't too bad. I'm keeping it nice and clean in here. I know some people like to make comments about that. But these meters are awesome. I have three of them. I will not sell them. I love these meters. I love the older watcher meters. So I don't have this side hooked up, just this side. And these ones are lit, which is cool. So I tried using the 847, but for some reason it has a key spike when I go to key it. So I didn't like that spike and output when I first key it. So I switched to my 950. My good old test radio. My radio, I've, I've put this thing through a lot of abuse and it keeps on chugging along. <laughs> I mean, I test a lot of amps, I leave it keyed. And uh, great radio, so... So, okay, so thanks for watching, and I will see you guys very, very soon.